Hey, what's up guys? This is Krishna here. I hope you're all well and safe. Um, welcome to this exciting tutorial on Houdini Realistic Fire using Axiom Solver and rendered in Redshift. So this is a two-part tutorial. In the first part, we're going to do this. And then in the second part, we're going to continue um, doing this part here where there is vellum and um, fire involved. Okay, good. So that's out of the way. I want to talk about my uh, social uh, platforms. So first of all, this tutorial is for free on YouTube. However, if you'd like to s support me, please um, check out my Gumroad page. You can also follow me by um, you know subscribing yourself here and click on follow, obviously. And then, uh, you know, you can you can purchase these files if you like. Uh, if you do end up purchasing these files, please uh, consider rating my files. That'd be much appreciated. And I have a YouTube channel, as you know. Obviously, you're watching it right now. Please uh, consider subscribing to my channel. And I have a ton of tutorials on uh, Houdini as well as other stuff. Uh, so check it out. I have a Vimeo channel. Uh, if you like to subscribe to that, um, and then Instagram, uh, and finally, I have OpenSea account now, which I created a few weeks ago, where I have placed some of the NFTs here. Um, if you would like to look at them or purchase them, etc., please go ahead and uh, feel free to do so. So that's all the uh, social links out of the way. Let's jump into what's happening here. So this um, UI interface looks slightly different. That is because for this tutorial to work and for this fire to look the way it does, you need to install ASUS Color Space. Okay. For that, I have a few websites I want to show you. Okay. So this is the first one where you can download OCIO, which is Open Color IO Configs, for free from here. I'll leave the links for everything in the description. Okay, check it out. So this is Color Science Open Color IO Configs. Okay, and if you click on this little drop down um, arrow mark, you'll get this and you can download the zip. All right. And uh, once you get the zip, you can extract that file and you can save it wherever you want. Uh, in my case, I've saved it in uh, Documents 18.5, which is where uh, Houdini environment variable resides. Okay. Uh, this is in Windows, obviously for Mac. It's you know you can choose wherever you want. So the next page is uh, Mr. LixM, where uh, you can purchase his file, uh, which is an app really, which is an image color space converter. You can use this to convert your um, normal HDR images to um, ASUS color space. Okay. Um, but you don't need to do this. Um, I mean, I know, you know, like if I look at this here, it says free. I don't know why it says free when it's two euros, but <clears throat> I don't know. It's fantastic. You know, just a click of a button. It just works flawlessly and it's only two euros. Uh, but if you don't want to do that, um, you have a bunch of tutorials here. So number one is by CG force. Um, here is where I got the information about Mr. Lixem. Um, Gumroad file anyway. But here, um, if you want to know more about it, you can check this out. And then if you want to convert your textures to ASUS uh, free, um, you can check Adrian Lambert um, tutorial here, as well as Tim has released his own version as well. So I'll leave a link in the description for all of these. Okay. However, for this tutorial, you will not need to purchase this because we are not converting um, anything. To be honest, um, um, I do have an HDR, but it doesn't really matter. Okay. Um, but if you do want to, um, you know, choose the free version, it's right here. All right. Um, or here. All right. Good. That's out of the way. Let's move on. So this is the Houdini environment file, um, which is available within 18.5 right here. Okay. So to install this, you need to add this line of code here. Okay. Uh, this is where I've saved my um, open color IO config file. So you just plug this in here. And <clears throat> hopefully, when you open Houdini, you should see 
this kind of color on your um, on your viewport okay and if you are in doubt you can I think go into uh, if you can go into color settings and um, in color correction you'll see this already hooked up for you okay so that's how it works all right good now that's out of the way let's jump right into business okay so first of all I'm gonna go ahead and create a box control click on the box oh by the way although this is gonna be advertised as a beginner tutorial um, I would expect you to know um, you already are aware of user interface and how to use it and etc etc okay uh, this is indeed a user uh, beginner tutorial because it's not really that complicated all right okay so <clears throat> there it is and uh, there's the box object I'm gonna change this to axiom setup dive in okay there's our box okay I'm gonna give it a lot more divisions so like 20 for example okay good okay I'm gonna create a transform now and I want to increase the uh, X scale a little bit and reduce this one a lot I'm just I'm just trying to create a flat base okay basically and then I'm going to also bring this down a little bit okay like that all right pretty cool let me copy the uh, Y scale and paste it here and divide it by two so that it sits on the ground plane all right good okay fantastic and I'm also going to increase the uniform scale to four because um, it's just better okay I'm gonna create a uh, null here and call it out geo okay and let's move on I'm gonna create a scatter node first total count to 10,000 and this is important because I'm creating the scatter on the surface okay and um, there's a reason for it <clears throat> all right that's fine now I'm gonna put in a pyro source node let's create a pyro source node okay I'm gonna initialize source fuel and it'll create these two for us I'm gonna create a third one uh, called velocity I'm not sure if this is going to be very useful, but I'm going to create it anyway. Right, I'm going to change the particle separation to really, really small. Okay, so for example, um, if I were to bring in a sphere, and let's say copy two points, this is the geometry, and this is the target points. Okay, uh, I may want to add it here. Okay, good. So you can see now that is the size of the sphere, okay? Because if you leave it at point one, it's gonna look like that. And that is a problem because if you look at the original box and this, uh, not that box, uh, this box here, you see how, uh, come on, that one and this one. You see how big that is? That does not really represent our, um, our perimeter of the box okay so I'm gonna reduce this to 0 0.02 so it kind of tightly fits around it all right that's why okay good hopefully you got that one good I'm not gonna change anything else here all right okay the next one is we're gonna add some noise now okay so I'm gonna create an add noise oops just type in noise maybe attribute noise that's it okay good now I'm gonna connect this, but I want to check. I want to show you this, right? So basically, you have all of these parameters. But here's the thing. I don't know why this is. Um, so this is attribute noise. You can see here, right? Okay, I'm gonna create a sphere here. Okay, and I'm gonna to go to pyro effects or maybe sparse pyro, and click on. No, actually. Pyro effects. I'm going to click on flames. So it's created a bunch of nodes for us. Okay. And if I dive into sphere, you can see add noise here. All right. But 
What's this? This attribute noise is different to this attribute noise here. So I'm not really sure why that is. For example, there, there, there is a mode here. We don't have that. And you can add multiple attributes here uh, on this one. I can't. Like there is a location attribute, but if I change this attribute to V and I want to add P, you know, I can. I, I, I don't know. Um, maybe I can type it in, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just uh, copy this note and I'm going to paste it here instead. All right. And let me get rid of all of these. That's fine. Okay, good. Okay, perfect. Now, obviously, we're bringing in not only fuel and temperature, we're also bringing in velocity. So I'm going to add that. And let me choose to display, let's say, temperature. Okay, good. There it is. So I want to change this to multiplicative, okay? Because it's going to multiply what's coming in instead of adding it. All right, that's better for fire generally, anyway. And I'm going to change the noise type to alligator. Yeah, something like that. And I'm also going to remap noise and I don't want anything in the negative direction. I'm going to change it to zero and I'm going to change the maximum to two just to keep it round number. Um, and I'm going to change this distribution slightly. Um, let's say you can play around with these values, to be honest. Um, come on. I'm just going to pull these up. Okay. All right. I think that is pretty good, sort of. Okay. Uh, so I'm just going to. All right. So that's how it looks, pretty much. All right. Good. So if I now run this, uh, the thing's actually happening. Is this animated? Yeah, it is animated. All right, okay. So I'm gonna change the uh, pulse duration to 0.2. Um, okay, so that's not animating. I'm not really sure why that is. Um, but let me add an offset to it, all right? Okay, I'm gonna say $t multiplied by two, which is time multiplied by two, okay? so. Let's see, so there you go, it works now, okay? So I'm gonna copy this and I'm gonna paste it here and here, okay? Oh, what happened there? Uh, so let me just delete this. Okay. Cop copy. You know, paste relative reference. Uh, it doesn't like that. All right, fair enough. Okay, I'll tell you what. I'm just gonna put. You can use dollar t or at time. Um, both are the same. And I'm just gonna type in this for all of them. I'm not sure why it's throwing error, but anyway. So now you can see that is what is happening. All right, good. Um, but I know for a fact that these are pretty big. All right, so I'm gonna change the element size to 0.1. So it's pretty small and it does that. Okay, that's what I want. Okay, good. <clears throat> so let's move on to fractal type. I'm going to change this to hybrid terrain. And I'm going to leave them at default. And I'm going to enable lattice warp and change the lattice warp to 0.5 and frequency to 0 0.04. Okay, so you know, just to give it a little more um, sort of grainy look and then I'm also going to enable gradient warp and add a little bit to it okay I think that's pretty good finally I want to make sure that it goes doesn't go below zero okay all right so I think that's about it and I'm gonna just go in and check get rid of temperature check fuel yeah it pretty much looks the same yeah, P scale is okay. Velocity. All right. So <clears throat> if I now click on this, you can see little um, velocity trails and you can see they are moving, uh, which is helpful. All right. Good. Okay. I'm just going to zoom out. Oops. I'm going to zoom out. All right. Good. I'm going to save this.